Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to be talking about what is an LLC and how do LLCs work. So an LLC is a limited liability company. This is a legal entity that you can form for a business or for any other kind of investment project like buying real estate, things like that. Now, a limited liability company is something that is set up that is separate from you personally. It is taking your business or your investment project or whatever it is and putting it inside a little bubble that is separate from you. Now, LLCs, limited liability companies, are new. And I put quote marks around that because they're not actually new. They've been around for many, many decades. But they're new in the sense of the legal profession, which thinks in terms of hundreds of years. And they're also not something that's in every country. Limited liability companies are something that's in the United States. Most countries don't have something like that. They might have some other kind of limited business and they usually have corporations, maybe always have corporations that are kind of the old fashioned way of setting up a legal entity for a business that's been around for hundreds of years. The reason we have LLCs is because corporations have a lot of formalities that are not appropriate for many situations. It makes sense to have a corporation if you have a big giant business and you're pitching venture capital and it's going to go public someday and you have, you know, thousands of shareholders that own this business, that corporation is the right choice. But what about when you have a business that's just one or two or three people? Yes, you can still set up a corporation, but that's a whole lot of formalities that you're required to do that's fairly odd when you just have one or two or three people. So a lot of times people would just have a partnership which is the default legal entity. It's not even really an entity. It's a, it's a structure when you have more than one person go into business together. Now, the problem with a general partnership, an old fashioned partnership is that each partner is personally liable for the stuff in the business, including what the other partner does that you may not even have agreed to or know about. That's very dangerous kind of business structure. And I like literally never recommend that for any situation. Now, if you're one person setting up a business, the default is a sole proprietorship, which is you and the business are the same. That's not a terrible idea because theoretically you can control yourself and not do terrible things that you will be liable for, but it still has a lot of risk. So the reason that LLCs were created was to combine the great parts of having a corporation, which is limited liability, with the great parts about having a partnership, which is a lot of flexibility and informality. So they smashed that stuff together and made an LLC. So as I said, an LLC is like a corporation in that you as the owner have limited liability for what happens in the business. So if the business gets sued, if it has a lot of debt, what it has to go bankrupt, it is separate from you and they're not going to come and take your own money and take your house, etc. Unless they can pierce the corporate veil. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. A like a partnership in that partnerships have a lot of flexibility, how you structure it. So let's say you start a business with two other people. You and one person are going to actually run the business. The third person is really just a passive investor. They're just giving the money and they just want some rate of return. Well, it doesn't make sense for them to have control in the business and, and need to be running the business on a daily basis because, they're just wanting to invest money. So with a partnership or a limited liability company, you can structure it such that the two people are going to manage the business on a daily basis. And then the other partner is just a passive investor and they don't really have control over what happens on a regular basis. You're only going to go to them for big stuff. Like you're going to sell the entire business, things like that. Now you can have an LLC that just has one owner. This was something that years ago was a big debate because it, since an LLC is kind of like a partnership, people were like, well, you can't be partners with yourself. That makes no sense. But the law is settled on this. You can have an LLC with one owner. Now there's, you'll see some stuff out there that there are problems with having an LLC with one owner. And I'm not going to go into all the legal details of that because that's like way too much unless you're really interested in it. But the bottom line is, if you are honoring the corporate formalities or the LLC formalities in this case, and you are not doing fraudulent things and you're not trying to like use this LLC to like, m you know, mess with people and to, to hide money in a like fraudulent kind of way, then these kind of issues are really not going to apply to you. They apply to people who set up a whole bunch of different LLCs and are hiding money and moving things around this kind of shell game as a way to defraud people and maybe not pay taxes, you know, things like that. And I say not pay taxes. I don't mean being strategic about lowering your taxes. I mean tax fraud, which is a very different thing. 
So hopefully you who are watching this video, you're not going to be using your LLC to do fraud on people or to try to hide money in some kind of illegal way. And you're just, you know, having an ordinary business. So that's not going to be the trouble that you're going to go into. The problem that can happen with LLCs is that because they're less formal, because you don't have to have bylaws and minutes of your annual board meeting and, and all this stuff, it can end up being too informal, especially if there's just one owner or there's maybe just, you know, two or three owners and they're in a relationship, like a personal relationship too. So they tend to be more casual about things in this business. The issues with the LLC, like I said, you have to honor corporate formalities and I'm going to actually be doing a video specifically about how do you actually honor corporate formalities, but you have to keep the business separate from yourself. It has to have its own checking account. You have to keep track of money in some kind of bookkeeping system. You can't just take LLC money and pay for your own personal stuff. Okay. Everything has to be done with paperwork. Everything needs to be formal. When you pay yourself for your LLC, you don't just use the LLC money to go buy groceries for yourself. You have your LLC pay you money into your personal checking account and then use your own money to buy the groceries. And yes, is that tedious? Sure. Is that an extra paperwork? Sure. But the thing is, it's not that tedious. And if you don't do it, you might as well not even have formed this LLC because it's going to be as if it doesn't exist because it's your alter ego. It's you're just treating it as an extension of yourself. So you still have to honor those formalities. Even they're, they're really tiny formalities. So it's really not going to be that hard to do. It's a tiny bit of tediousness, but it's not that much. Another wonderful benefit of an LLC is tax planning. So the default, if a one person forms an LLC is that it's taxed as a sole proprietorship. If two or more people form an LLC, the default is that it's taxed as a partnership. That can be the right tax status, especially in the beginning, especially if you're taking a loss. But as time goes on and you're making more money in this business, and it's paying out more profits, you're probably going to want to do some more sophisticated tax planning. And so because of this, you can have an LLC that is taxed as a corporation. It can be taxed as an S corp if you're eligible for that or taxed as a C corp. That means you get the benefits of an LLC with having less paperwork to do with the benefits of a corporation having more sophisticated tax planning and as a way to potentially save money on taxes. Now, unlike a sole proprietorship or a partnership, to form an LLC, you actually have to form it with a state. So in the United States, LLCs are not formed on a national level or a federal level. They're formed at a state level. So you have to pick a state. Now, what state you should you pick? really depends on your exact situation. But if you're residing in the United States, most of the time it makes sense to pick the state where you reside because you're going to have to file a bunch of stuff there anyway, and you don't want to file in the other state and your state. Occasionally, if you have a business that is 100% virtual, it is possible and no employees physically working there, etc. Sometimes you can have it formed in another state besides the one you live at. But if you end up forming having it be taxed as an S corp and you pay yourself as an employee, you're going to have to register in your own state anyway. So for a lot of situations, this doesn't make a lot of sense. If you are outside the United States, if you reside outside the United States, then you can pick whichever state you want. If it's, you have a state where you have physical connections, you have employees there, you have inventory, then I'd probably pick that state because you're going to have to register there anyway. If you have, it's all completely 100% virtual. Let's say you're selling eBooks, you know, something that is 100% virtual. Then you can just pick whichever state makes sense. So people usually pick states that have low costs and that are, are easy to form things. So Nevada has been a classic one. Um, a lot of people pick Wyoming. They've set up a lot of things there. And there's also been other states that have been getting into this game of setting up LLCs as a way for, I think, for the state to make money. So People are setting up LLCs in New Mexico and Montana and in other states as well. The, uh, the bottom line is if you are starting a business and you want to protect yourself from the business, you, if the business gets sued or goes bankrupt or whatever, you don't want to personally be on the line. An LLC is a very good thing to consider as a great option for you. The one time that, that that's most common where it doesn't make sense is if you're outside the United States, having an LLC may be difficult for you to deal with because they don't have LLCs in your own country. And or if you're doing business with people in a lot of different countries, in that case, it may make more sense to set up a corporation because you want something that everyone will understand and it'll be easier for 
uh, people in your own country, your accountant, et cetera, to handle the paperwork for that versus if you have an LLC and they don't even know what you're talking about. The same kind of thing if you're doing business with people in other countries, they'll understand what a corporation is, but they may not get what an LLC is. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about what we've talked about today, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this. And if you found this video especially helpful for you, you can always join the Discord or sign up for the Patreon. Information about that is in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.